We've got flags and banners, and if you mind your manners, we might even get to standards and what they represent. So just take my boy's hand, and we'll both try to understand how this vexillion logic podcast could be flagged for content. Flagged for What's up, Vexheads, and welcome to episode 42 of Flagged for Content. It's the only podcast with a host going to NAVA 57 next week. I think I can confidently say that one. Uh, it is also a Flags for Good podcast who is furnishing pretty much all my little goodies at NAVA next week. So an extra thank you to them. Uh, as always, you can go to flagsforgood.com slash flagged for content, like the number four. And use the code flagged for content spelled the same way to get yourself a little discount and help the show out. Another place you can get 10% off is this lovely little place in Wales. You may have heard of it. It's called Mr. Flag. And our code over there is just simply FFC. I suspect we may hear a little bit more about Mr. Flag later. I did want to give a much delayed shout out here uh, as well. A few weeks ago, I think like six weeks ago, over a month ago, um, I put an older photo of the flags around like Rockefeller Center in uh, in New York on Instagram. And I challenged you Vex heads to tell me what time frame it could have possibly been taken in. Um, and by narrowing down the flag changes of Malawi, Mauritania and Libya, one person was able to narrow it down to the winter of 2011 slash 2012. Uh, pretty pretty good <laughs> and that person was at evan d823 so uh, on instagram anyway so congrats that's evan dunker who is a vex head from nebraska speaking of which i am finally getting around to some unboxing videos so keep an eye on youtube and the soshi meads for that one thing i wanted to highlight this week is our patreon which is about to undergo a pretty cool format change uh, what I'm going to start doing is after the regular episodes, I am going to just continue chatting with that week's guest for like 15 minutes ish or so, uh, and release those conversations the same day as the regular episodes of, on the Patreon feed, of course. Uh, but as like a companion episode or addendum or, you know, whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm, it's, I'm really excited about this. Uh, it should be very cool. Uh, sadly, I did have that idea after recording this week's episode. So that will not start until episode 43 in a couple weeks here, but uh, still really excited uh, for audio listeners. I will have all the links in the show description under the episode. So check that out. And that is it for the housekeeping. Uh, we've got an absolutely incredible episode this week. I, <laughs> I had the pleasure of sitting down with Charles Ashburner, FFI, uh, former CEO of the Flag Institute in the UK and owner of Mr. Flag in Wales. We chatted a lot about both. Uh, we took some slight detours, as you've come to expect from this show. And yeah, but Charles was a blast to talk to. So easy, so fun to talk to. Um, and truly, I know you guys are going to love this one. Uh, I'm almost jealous for you getting to hear this or watch this for the first time. So anyway, let's not dilly dally any longer. Past Andy, take it away. Folks, we have yet another amazing guest for y'all this week. You know him as the one-time CEO of the Flag Institute. You know him as a proud Welshman and campaigner for independence, despite having been named after Prince, now King Charles. And you will know him as the founder of the best-known UK flag maker across social media. It's Charles Ashburner, a.k.a. Mr. Flag! Hello! Borada, Charles. Borada, or Pranhanda, as it is for us here in the afternoon. Yes, yes, true. It's uh, nine thirty here, but a little bit later there, I guess. It is. It's nearly two thirty in the afternoon. Yeah. Speaking of there, where is there for you? Uh, here is Swansea in South Wales. So beautiful place on the coast, um, gotcha. sweltering in, in in high temperatures for us at the moment. Yeah, I heard you were saying it's. Uh hottest day of the year so far anyway supposedly yeah for us that's about, <laughs> i don't know what you you work in but for us that's about 32 degrees yeah i i can't remember i, I lived 
abroad for a little bit and learned Celsius about by the time I had left <laughs> and then left and, you know, immediately mm. forgot it all. But yeah, there's probably probably mid to high 80s. Gotcha. Gotcha. Which, which for us is hot. Yeah. And behind the scenes for the listeners and viewers, Charles has been kind enough to turn off his fan, <laughs> even <laughs> despite that, uh, for your listening pleasure. So, you know. Which is more than I can do with my dog. I wish I could turn him off. If you hear him, I apologize. Anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, so Charles, we have a ton to get into today. So I'm Great. gonna go ahead and let the Vex heads know what is on the flagpole today. It's uh the first part is no surprise. We'll do our usual overrated and underrated. We will uh Charles will tell us the surprising flag that got him into flags. We'll discuss the UK's Flag Institute and Charles's roles in that, both past and present. And of course, since we are people with wind, we'll talk all things Mr. Flag. But before we get into any of that good stuff, Charles, I like to ask my guests, what is the flag that got you into flags? Well, thank you for the build up. Um, and I'm not entirely sure it's that, that surprising. <laughs> um, the flag that really got me personally into flags is the flag of Wales, the Welsh dragon that you see behind you, the Ddraig Goch. Um, my father was a flag maker before me. Okay. So, um, so when I was a small boy growing up, so basically I've, flags have been in my entire life. Sure. Um, as, a, as a child, we would have uh, parts of the Welsh flag to make at home in the evenings. Okay. In those days, flags were all sewn, stretched sure. by hand. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, very, very different to nowadays where the vast majority are printed. And so mm -hmm. what that meant was that we would stencil the Welsh dragon onto little bits of red cotton. So we would draw, we, that's one of the right. things that okay. we would draw yeah. that. Then we would put that stenciled red dragon with, with the, you know, on a square of fabric. Mm -hmm. onto a base, a white and green base, mm -hmm. with another piece of red cotton behind it, that would then be sewn through along the lines that I had drawn. Right. Not not sewn by me. I'm appalling at sewing, even to this day. <laughs> okay, I'm afraid. Um, and then they, 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 a few days later, they would be back in the house, and with a tiny pair of very, very sharp scissors, we would have to trim off the outside excess fabric of the dragon. Oh, whoa. Um, uh, so yeah. from a very early age, perhaps, I don't know, seven or eight, um, we were, my, myself and my siblings were doing that at home. Right. Uh, so, so really, that was my very first um, and, and most fondly remembered uh, thing to do with flags. And, and that's what got me into it. Yeah, that's good, because I feel like that story ends in one of two ways. Like, either you grow up loving it loving the experience or you're like why are mom and dad making me do this i hate this like i never want to do this again and you end up just like off of flags in general and maybe especially the welsh one or well, something funnily enough both of those things are true that's because, fair yeah because initially uh, i left home and wanted to have nothing to do with flags uh-huh um <laughs> how'd that and, go but i and, and fine I, I i was uh you know moderately successful at having a proper job sure sure um Although flags was always a, a hobby and an interest of mine, obviously having grown up like that, mm -hmm. and um, but then when I, I for various reasons, I, I eventually came home and decided to set up Mister Flag. Uh, my father's business had ceased, um, mm -hmm. and uh, my wife was was foolish enough to support me in this, <laughs> as a consequence of which. Uh, her <laughs> life has been filled with flags ever since. Aha. Uh -huh. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I know the uh, the trope of the long suffering uh, significant other. My mm. my fiance is anytime I get mail, here's flags for you, even when it's not flags, which is rare that it's not. But mm. <laughs> and she's probably, she's, a, she's probably a flag book then. Yeah, yeah. In that case, it <laughs> usually is. But yeah, she has helped me uh, more than she flags have been more of a part of her life than she ever would have imagined i'm sure yeah did but, that with my wife yeah yeah but uh, so back to the uh the welsh dragon the how do you pronounce it in welsh Zraig goch Zraig goch yeah. okay I'll, there's, uh, there's a lot of lot of 
two Ds going on in the Welsh language. Yeah, and that's pronounced almost like a, a voiced mm. TH? Yeah, like a V. Okay. With a sort of a, with a buzzing behind it. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, um, we have, I don't know if you watched the, uh, or, or heard the episode with uh, Juan Artero from uh, the Canary Islands, but he is learning Welsh. Mm. And he's a Spanish speaker by, you know, natively. So he's, but he's learning Welsh through English. So it seems like a nightmare, but. No, yeah. I, I know. I am excruciatingly <laughs> bad at Welsh. I don't speak it. Okay. Um, my wife is a Welsh speaker. Uh, and a lot of people I deal with do speak Welsh. Um, but I'm more of a muddling through sort of guy. Um, gotcha. And gotcha. Uh, not, not nearly intelligent enough to pick up languages. <laughs> Fair enough. That's about. About like the one thing I have been intelligent enough for in my life, but um, yeah. So so anyway, on the uh, the dragon, was it? I don't know what years we're talking when you were growing up, um, cutting those, stitching them, all that. But was it standard? Did it look like it does now, or was it the kind of older, less defined, I guess, version? Um, the older, less defined version mm -hmm. for, for sure. And in fact, that's the version that we still make ourselves. Okay. Um, so, for example, I don't know if Actually, you can see this. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 So that that is the pattern. Uh, that unless we are asked to do something different um, uh, by a customer, that's the version that we supply. Okay. And, and and it has the advantage. There are a number of elements of the design that mean that if I see a flag, I know immediately whether or not we've made it. A Welsh dragon, so it doesn't matter where in the world there are some design imperfections deliberately in that dragon, which, okay, which only appear in in our version, right? And only you would kind of know what to look for, yeah, and, and uh, where, so, yeah. So they're small, um, uh, but uh, I can, I can, I am that boring that I can identify <laughs> a flag I have made from a hundred paces. Yeah, well, <laughs> you're you're talking to the right audience because that is fascinating yeah <laughs> the exact opposite of boring for uh myself and everyone who's gotten this far into a flag show i think but yeah, yeah that's awesome it's it's like your own kind of little uh signature of sorts absolutely the flag the design of the dragon that you have behind you yes um is sort of the wikipedia version it very much is this is a yeah. cheap you know yeah, yeah but that the the um and that's a correct me if i'm wrong but that's probably a chinese made or Taiwanese yeah, yeah, made definitely. flag, yeah, yeah, which is <laughs> which is fairly standard for most most flags around um, these days. They're they're cheap and cheerful and easy to get hold of. Mm -hmm. The design when when the cheap Chinese imports started coming into the UK, which is probably in the nineties, uh, um, they had a different design, mm. which is very very poor by comparison to either the one you have or the one we have mm -hmm. and the reason it's so poor is because they i i think they must have taken it from the house flag of a company called uh charles willie shipping which has a, a unique sort of clumpy footed dragon okay um, i gotta look that up charles willie shipping yeah Ch charles or Chaz willie shipping um uh, I probably should have, having spoken about this now, I should have had one handy. Oh, um, that's all right. <laughs> because we still make their flags today. Um, but the I, viewers I will, will see it and the listeners I, I, can Google yeah, it. Yeah, I will, I will send you a, a copy. Perfect. Um, but it was a, it's a peculiar looking creature. And initially, all of the imported flags, uh, Welsh flags from China, had that dragon on. And it, yeah. it it was only when they presumably managed to sell the many thousands that they'd made that it then changed to the Wikipedia version. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. That is a, yeah, it is a, well, yeah. Like I said, the viewers can see it. It is very club footed is the best way to, to describe it, I guess. <laughs> yeah. It, it almost looks like it's got like duck, like, like fins or something. Like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Big but, old yeah, for, You see for a, for a, a dragon on a, on a corporate flag, it works fine because they they it, it rec oh, sure, rec yeah. recognizably them. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's a, a little known fact about the Welsh dragon right there. Gotcha. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So that is the flag that got you into flags. Um, let's go into the over and underrated. 
And as I've told the last few guests, you can do that in either order you like. Okay, well, um, let's go with underrated. All right. Um, Kyrgyzstan, or, uh, yeah, the, 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 the Kyrgyz Republic. Yeah. yeah. Um, which is, I, I don't know if you're going to show that, but I'll, I've got one be handy. Here. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I own yeah. that one as well. It's a beautiful flag. Um, and the reason for me that it is so beautiful, first of all, it's based on red, which I think is the best color for a background of a flag. Yeah, you're not going to get any argument here. Um, it's, uh, you know, you rec you can see a red flag from from massive distance away. It's it's just a wonderful thing. I also like, I like a, um, a badge or, or, or a design which is one-to-one, -one. so square uh -huh. or round. And I like that because it fits on so many things. Um, you know, if you want to have a button or a sticker or right right or anything it's so it's it's a really good design plus the design itself is both simple and elegant yeah it's, yeah um it's inclusive it's it's a sun it's it represents the people of kyrgyzstan everybody under the sun mm -hmm. it's it, it incorporates the the top of a traditional kyrgyz yurt so their their tent is that that sort of crisscross design in the yeah. center, yeah, and um, and the rays of the sun. There are there are forty rays representing the forty tribes of Kyrgyzstan. Okay, right. And in fact, the the word Kyrgyz is derived from a Turkish word that means forty tribes. Oh, okay. So it couldn't be any more elegant. Uh, yeah, if, or if it tried. or. Or representative, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it, it's a it's a it's a beautiful, simple, elegant flag, and I've just decided I'm going to move to Kyrgyzstan. I think okay, I think it's a wonderful place. I'm sure. Did I, I, I got the nothing, scoop on that. I'm getting this first, right? I know nothing, literally nothing about Kyrgyzstan other than its flag, but I look at the flag often, um, and whenever I send one out, I think, my goodness, that's a that is a stunning, <laughs> stunning piece of flaggage. I'm picturing you sending it off and just some like, I will remember you. <laughs> Something like that, but, but not as well as time. <laughs> I think I can sing that much of it very badly without getting copyright stricken. <laughs> <I'm sure>. um, <laughs> yeah, no, that you, you distilled right there. Like what, um, what makes it so good for me as well is that it says so much in something so simple. It's, it's a simple design. It's reproducible mm. um, fairly easily. Uh, but it's got so much wrapped up in that simple design that uh, that really, you know, tells a story, which is we want what we want a lot of our flags to do. So, yeah, yeah. it's, it's um, they took their time with it as well. I mean, obviously, mm -hmm. the, the reason that the flag came about was post-Soviet era independence. Right, right. Um, and but they didn't just say, all right, quickly, let's do this flag. They they had a. They sort of had a public consultation for two two years or so, and then it was another ten years before they officially wrote it into their law. So they really took their time to get it right, and I I think they nailed it completely. Yeah, yeah, I'm seeing that now. I actually don't know. So I've talked um, before on the show about like the atlas that I grew up with that had the flags that kind of was the thing that got me into flags in the first place. Mm. Um, and that would have been an Atlas from probably like 96, 97, maybe. Okay. I don't remember what it had for Kyrgyzstan. I, I, I don't really either, don't. Actually, I must be honest. I, I, I really don't. But yeah. they, I think the competition that they, um, uh, more a consultation perhaps that they had, I think they had four or 500 designs uh -huh. submitted. But I think that was 92 to 94 or 95. Okay, I guess it did have this one then. I just Something don't remember like it. I... Yeah. But like I say, they didn't write it into law until 2004. Uh, okay, yeah. So maybe maybe there was a period of time when there was another flag. Um, I'm showing the gaps in my knowledge now. There's, you know, honestly, there's no way to know. <laughs> there's no way to find out. No, the, uh, the one thing that I, other than like everything we've said uh, about it, it also reminds me a little bit of the Xbox logo 
It does. <laughs> The uh, yeah. especially the Xbox 360, which is I think the one that first had the circle and the X cut in it. Yeah, yeah. So as a uh, millennial, every time I look at this, that's what I see first. But well, that's another cool reason to love it. Yeah, right. It uh, <laughs> ties ties in even one more thing that I like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bet, I bet the the Xboxes sold in Kyrgyzstan <laughs> look great. I bet they really do. <laughs> I'll have to Google that later yeah. for them up here in the in the video. All right. So, yeah, I, I definitely agree. This one is definitely underrated. It doesn't really get talked about a lot. Even when we talk about the stands, we're usually talking Kazakhstan. We're talking Turkmenistan mm -hmm. and that elaborate, you know, carpet mm -hmm. uh, ghoul pattern. Um, yeah, this one gets less shine than its neighbors. But, uh, yeah, I, I think it deserves a lot more. I Glad think for elegance, this has got to take one of the top spots. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. All right, so that was the high note. Let's go down to the low note and see which one Charles thinks is overrated. Okay, well, controversial one here. Mm. Um, because it's a, it's not a bad looking flag. What I'm going to choose for this. Uh huh. Um, it's one of the world's most recognizable flags. Certainly, I, think I know where we're going. And it's got couple of hundred years of history under its belt mm -hmm. um it's the flag of the united kingdom oh uh, now indeed there's a lot to be said for it um it's a clever design i'll get the good bits out of the way first of all it is a clever design it's the colors are beautiful you can't go wrong with red white and blue um however uh at the time when it was created, and I understand that the world has changed, but in, mm -hmm. th in those days, it was very much about um, England, Scotland, and Ireland. Mm -hmm. um, and Wales, which is my country, yeah. was an irrelevance to the people at the big table when they mm -hmm. created that flag. Consequently, there is no reference in the flag to Wales at all. Right. Um, and there's plenty of historical arguments as to why, which I totally understand and accept, but that is not an excuse for um, the modern era mm -hmm. where Wales is very much treated as a semi-separate entity in the United Kingdom in the same way that Scotland is. Mm -hmm. We have our own parliaments. We have our own elected representatives. Right. Um, we control some, but not all of our budget. But no effort has ever been made to incorporate Wales into the flag. Mm -hmm. um, and the time for that has now passed. I don't think the people in Wales who would have supported that are now more in favour of independence than they right, are for right. greater representation. Yeah. But there was, enough, funnily enough, on a slighter side, there was a there was a um, a, a potential moment after the death of the late queen where they could have mm. uh, thrown a bone if you like to uh, <laughs> the welsh people the the royal standard of course has right four quarters mm -hmm. two of the quarters are england yeah yeah why yeah yeah you've got, you've got four countries essentially making up the united kingdom mm -hmm. the there was a moment where king charles um could have said, look, this is an important moment. We'll have one one quarter each for each of the countries that are constituent parts of the UK. Yeah. Um, and I know that that was suggested to the palace. Um, and again, no no movement on that. So yeah. as you can tell, <clears throat> this, is, this is my Welshness and my oh, love yeah. of independence <laughs> coming out here sure. um, in, in flags. But for that reason, um, I think that the the Union flag is overrated because it no longer it no longer even attempts to represent the even the geographic fullness of the country. Right, never, right, yeah. never never mind the religious fullness, because of course the flag is all made up of Christian crosses. Right. Um, yeah, that's course, something that usually gets lost in the in this discussion. Yeah, yeah I'm glad you um, mentioned that too. So for so many reasons, I feel that whilst it's a beautiful flag that is has a has a has a has a history that many people are proud of, 
um, and is instantly recognisable around the world, mm. I'm afraid for me, its relevance is now uh, past, shall we say. Yeah. And I, I no longer feel that it represents me as a Welshman. Sure, sure. Yeah, no, elegantly put. Um, yeah, like you said, the the time when they could have done anything is past. It seems like it seems like a, a lot of the reason that it is has stayed the way that it has is, you know, history, basically. It's, oh, it's got X amount of history. We have to keep that history. Like, there's a, a ton of arguments in, like, our state of Utah now for... Uh, they've got a new flag, which I'm sure you're aware of. And hmm. there's one side that's saying, oh, you're erasing history by changing the old flags. No, things change and move. Um, and in the UK's case, they haven't kept up with the times, the moving, changing times. And yeah, yeah they've fallen and, behind. And, but And flags do change. And yeah, the fact I mean, the US have... one is like a, a, a subtle example of that. Well, a perfect example of it. Um, and, and one would hope that if there was another tribe incorporated into Kyrgyzstan, they would have a 41 raid sun. Yeah. Um, you know, little changes can be made um, and they haven't been made. And the argument that's been used by a combination of perhaps government and, and the College of Arms, um, mm -hmm. control heraldry, mm -hmm. and, um, uh, and perhaps the palace, is is that because no change has ever happened before, it shouldn't be made again, um, or yeah. shouldn't be attempted. But it's it's not true. I hate because, that argument too. It's it's also the, right. It's also not true. Yeah. Well, the Union flag originally didn't have the red diagonal stripes. Right. When it was, it was yeah, sixteen oh one, and it was just the combination of uh, of the flags of England and Scotland. Mm -hmm. It didn't have the diagonals, and then with the uh, with um, the Act of Union in 1801, Ireland joined, and so they changed it then. But of course, they can only change it when they want to change it. Um, yeah. Uh, but for example, like the um, the uh, when Princess Diana sadly died many years mm. ago. Um, Princess of Wales, yeah. <laughs> Princess of Wales. Um, my father at the time was president of the Flag Institute, and he um uh, in fact the flag institute as a whole felt that the uh, the flag at, atop buckingham palace should be flown at half mast right there was no precedent for that ever having been done and so everybody was advising the palace that it shouldn't be done but eventually uh, the argument got through to the right people and i think after a I think actually there was quite a lot of outcry in the press from the public at the time. Oh, sure, and, yeah. And for the first time, the, the, the flag on, on Buckingham Palace was flown at half-mast, proving things can change. Yeah, things can change, and public pressure can be the thing that changes them. Because, like, exactly. yeah, she was nicknamed the People's Princess for a reason. And so, yeah. yeah, you've got that many people coming out. Like, I mean, I was young, but I remember that. I, mm. I was young and American, but I remember that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and like seeing it on TV, like tons, like throngs, huge crowds out there, all in tears, like all. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can't imagine. I mean, I can't imagine them not lowering it. I'm glad they I'm yeah. glad they I, and nowadays you would, to that, you would but... take that view now that it would be it would be inconceivable for them to not do right. that. But back then, yeah, they'd never done it. And they initially they said no. They even said no in the you know publicly in the press. Mm -hmm. until pressure was brought to bear so uh, the argument that change is not possible is uh, bogus yeah and that was what that was 97 right yeah. so 26 years ago yeah yeah, um, yeah. so I've, I've never agreed that uh that change to the union flag to include wales was either a problem or impossible and right they have just not wanted to do it perhaps because Wales is a is the smallest part of the United Kingdom. Yeah, um, I, I've heard the arguments. I've also heard that it's it's because oh, it was at the time that we did the the first Union flag, it was England and Wales was one thing, and then Scotland was the other thing. So yeah. England and Wales was considered its own. And that, uh, I would agree with that. I would agree. Of, yeah. They didn't include Wales because it was part of England, if you like, by de facto conquest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, and that would that would be an argument that they could stick to it were it not for the fact that 
nowadays Wales is treated as if it is one of the four countries of the United Kingdom. So you can't right, say right. you can't say it doesn't exist. Therefore, you can't change the flag. Yeah, and then and then demonstrate that it does exist and fail to include it. Uh -huh. so, so, so that's Wales, why my view of the Union flag is that. Oh yeah, you're preaching the choir here. But so Wales is uh, is it devolved in the same way that Scotland and Northern Ireland are? Like pretty much those the for them, well, the three of them in England all have on paper the devolution same. Devolution for all three countries is slightly different from each other. Okay. But yes, we have our own parliament. We have our own elected representatives. Um, I'm not saying I particularly support them. Um, sure. But uh, but yeah, to, to all intents and purposes, Wales, Wales is given just enough autonomy to make it feel like a separate country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but without any of the power to control its future. Yeah, the way it usually works, and uh, it might work over there, is like, yeah, when it's convenient to London, um, you know, Wales is its its own thing with its own powers and this, that, and the other. But when London really needs something, it's like, all right, but we're taking this or whatever. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, one last one last point, which you can edit out if you like. There is a big thing going on in the UK at the moment, the building of HS2, which is a high-speed train line going from the south of England, London, up up to the economic powerhouse of the north of England. Uh -huh. Now, the cost of that is enormous. Wales pay, pays a share of it, but the railway doesn't go anywhere near Wales. Right, right. Yeah, so, I've seen this. I think I follow uh, Yes Cum Cumri. That's it. Yeah, yeah, I'm a member. Okay, yeah, yeah, I follow them on, uh, I think probably because of you, I, I started seeing them because, you know, the algorithm works in mysterious mm. ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I was like, well, yeah, I, I generally support this. I would like to know more about it because I don't know much, admittedly, at the time. Still don't, but, mm. and uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, um, we'll get into that, but I think you probably make a lot of their flags, I would imagine. We do. We do. Um, but before we get into the Mr. Flag bit, I wanted to go over the Flag Institute stuff, as I mentioned uh, up top of the show. So I, I guess first and foremost, for our listeners and viewers who, who don't know, could you kind of give us a rundown of what is the Flag Institute? Uh, when did it spring up? Who are the members? You know, kind of the, the usual reporter's okay. questions there. Uh, well, first of all, I want to say I am no longer an officer of the Flag Institute, okay, um, but, but I was. Mm -hmm. um, the Flag Institute is just over 40 years old now. Okay. Um, it, it came about, uh, <clears throat> we have a, obviously there's a lot of UK, England in particular is a, is a center of heraldry. Yeah. Um, with um, the College of Arms and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And there was a heraldry society, there still is. Um, and essentially, the Flag Institute came about through a sort of breakaway movement of people who were more interested in flags than they were in pure heraldry. Okay. So, so the so the flag, the, the, the those guys, the flag guys, um, the forebears, if you like, of you and me, um, mm -hmm. they split from the heraldry society. They set up their own thing under. Um, Dr. William Crampton, um, and they started basically overtly loving flags and describing <laughs> them and, uh, you know, f researching them, storing information on them. And it was very much a, a small scale uh, hobbyist group to start with. Right. Yeah. Um, I can imagine. Over the years, it, it, it grew and grew. Um, uh, as I mentioned a little earlier, my late father was once president of it. Mm -hmm. Um, he was succeeded by Captain Malcolm Farrow, who is still its president. Um, and nowadays the Flag Institute has a, um, a, a non, non legislated, but nevertheless important role in terms of registering uh regional flags in the mm -hmm. uk um advising the government um and organizations on proper flag protocol um and it's generally a fascinating organization to be a part of um yeah. 
I mentioned the the death of Princess of Wales, and mm. so it was the Flag Institute that was very much um, mm. uh, trying to get the, the palace to to change the, what they thought was appropriate in terms of lowering the flag. Yeah, um, lots of little things like that. It's 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 an organisation which which has tried hard to represent what perhaps the regular person in the UK might feel about flags rather than the hardline um, herald sort of position, which can often be very different. Right, right. Um, you want to make it like accessible to the general public because you want to draw in new people. I mean, absolutely. among other reasons, but yeah, uh, it's, it's exciting. Like it's an exciting time to be in the flag community just in general. Oh, it um, is. There's a lot of new, um, so like our, our version of the Flag Institute kind of is NAVA. Yeah. And there is a, there's been a huge increase, like huge uptick in younger membership, like people around my age and, and even like a bit younger. Uh, the guest I have before you, it hasn't aired yet, but uh, listeners and viewers will have seen and heard it, is 16. And um, <clears throat> I think like one thing that's uh, just as a brief aside, one thing that's to thank for that is I think the internet like and Reddit has a I don't know if you know Reddit. There's a I vexillology. Do. Yeah. Mm. Vexillology subreddit on there is huge, like, yeah. and has drawn in a bunch of people. So yeah, I like that the Flag Institute is is you want to be accessible, you want to to get new members uh, and and do it the right way too. So yeah, no, it's 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 great. It's uh there are a couple of in person meetings a year. Um, I was just seeing that, yeah. And a couple of magazines a year. They are or... fantastic. Yeah, there's a magazine called Flagmaster, which is um has improved massively over the years and is now a really quite a thick journal with a range of stuff. There's some detailed stuff for the absolute hardline Vex heads and sure. also and also some more fun stuff. Um it's something for everyone, and it takes a long time to get through it and absorb it. Um, and uh, and I love that sort of thing. And I love going and yeah. meeting meeting people. Uh, for 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 a number of years, I was the chief executive, and uh, during that time, we moved from <clears throat> being just a, a sort of an association to being a, a registered charity. Um, okay. So that gives you know a few more financial options uh, and a. And a a veneer of respectability, right, right. Um, but but there's all sorts of you know there are there are publications and all sorts of things. It's just for a for anybody interested in flags, it's fantastic. And particularly if you can, if anybody comes along to one of the meetings, they're always welcome. Um, and it's just such a friendly, very much like Nava. I imagine I am a member of Nava actually, but okay, I've never, yeah, I've never been to a meeting. Sure. Um, but uh, I imagine very, very similar. Um, and uh, yeah, tremendous. Both are tremendous organizations. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, they are, and I guess like pretty um, comparable. And yeah, one thing I was going to ask you, see, get my notes here. Um, okay, actually, the first thing that I have in my notes to mention is uh, and if anyone from the Flag Institute is listening to this is a, a nod to you, but I wanted to say congrats to the Flag Institute on having a slightly nicer website than Nava does. These flag <laughs> websites are never good. And I know some folks at Nava listen to this too. <laughs> so take note, y'all. Um, these flag websites are never good, but the Flag Institute is a little bit better than Nava. So I'll yeah, give them credit they're, they're, for that. I think, I think but, both oh. suffer from being quite old. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's that's yeah. Uh, understandable. That actually kind of goes hand in hand with uh, the newer generations coming in, or hopefully yeah. uh, the Gen Zers know a lot more about this than than us millennials even. So yeah. hopefully, you know, as a design based group, I guess at its core, you would think. Well, anyway, <laughs> web design is different. Well, but, maybe, uh, maybe maybe both organizations feel that they're more uh, information based. Yeah. Than, than... And, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Time I'm sure is, the information uh, the information is great on either of them. Time and limited funds are probably better spent elsewhere, I guess. Yeah. But um okay, so yeah. So I wanted to touch on one thing that you mentioned during that is you said you were the chief executive for a number of years um, um at the Flag Institute. So I guess like I, I kind of uh I kind of just want to know what exactly 
that was like? I mean, I know that's very open ended, but like, what were your duties as chief executive? Um, and I wanted to know too, did you, when you were chief executive, which new flags were added to like the UK flag registry? And okay. and were you guys like a, a important, like moving part of that? Yeah. Um, okay. That's a lot of questions. Sorry. Um, no, no, that's, <laughs> that's fine. The, the setup of the flag Institute is very much like the constitutional setup of the UK. Okay. You, you have a head of state in for the UK. That's obviously the late queen or, or, or the king now. And in the case of the flag Institute, you have uh, a president, which, uh, is currently uh, Captain Malcolm Farrow, who is very much the figurehead and and a sort of guiding light that uh, makes sure everybody's pointing in the right direction. Mm -hmm. The person who the person who um, tends to direct its day to day activities is uh, the CEO, mm -hmm. and there is a um, a council of elected trustees, all of whom have jobs within the framework of the flag institute although that uh, the trustees bit only happened in my tenure as ceo before that okay. it was it was just people were appointed as and when we felt like it now they are formally elected and okay. um, have a proper role and, and was that something that that you instituted or was that something like i guess like uh how democrat is everything voted on or is it kind of like you get say over um well i did have a lot of say mm -hmm. um in, in those days um and i uh, i can't really answer for how it is now after i stood down but i i th i think it would be fair to say that it is pretty democratic um there are people who are expert in their particular roles but basically um everything is decided as a group and there are um you know there are a number of council meetings every year where the direction of travel is decided um but it's um you know i don't want to focus too much on the on the the hierarchy because it is a surprisingly sure. friendly organization oh yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, uh i i would be it would be untrue to say that i was the only person uh responsible for it becoming a charity um, mm -hmm. but, um, I think I, it would be fair to say that I, I sort of kicked and punched it through the finish line, Sure, something, yeah. something that had been planned for many years and just never gotten around to. Right. Um, right. And, uh, yeah, so that, that that's something nice. that I'm, yeah. I'm reasonably proud of, um, yeah. in terms of flags, um, that came into being whilst I was CEO, um, the one directly behind you has been itching at my consciousness. Since, <laughs> I knew we'd get to it. Since I, I logged in. The flag of Glamorgan. Yes. <sighs> um, this shows you how, to, how, how democratic the Flag Institute is. Okay, okay. okay. Even, even though I was leading the Flag Institute at the time. And live in Swansea. <laughs> and live in Swansea in Glamorgan. Yeah. Um, I did not have any influence over the registration of that flag as the flag of Glamorgan. All right. Now, that's not to say that it's not appropriate. I don't like it personally because historically it appears on the arms of Cardiff City. Oh. Cardiff and Swansea are each other's nemesis. Right, they're kind of like the number sport. one and number two, yeah. In sport, well, number one in the sense of Swansea, yes. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Obviously. Cardiff, uh, we'll call them three. Yeah, exactly. But so, for example, in football, of which I am a fan, um, Swansea and Cardiff are not friends, unless, of course, it's a Welsh <laughs> match against other people, in which case sure, they're the best sure, sure. friends. Um, so that flag, um, in my experience, is rarely, if ever, flown this far west in wales okay that is very interesting i so i put it up there to be like hey look you know this yeah, is where yeah. you, you know, it's been um, itching at the back of my head since i saw it <laughs> <laughs> absolutely but yeah no i'm uh and i knew the cardiff uh flag mm. generally speaking i knew you know it's a dragon and there's like a 
plant. I don't know exactly in a flag. Yeah. They've got, they've got, a, sorry, what? They've got beasts holding little flags on yeah. the arms of Cardiff City. Yeah, and, and I, I failed to properly recognize that the the flag in question that's being held is in fact, I guess, yeah. a more squared version of that. Yeah. Yeah. So there is lots of historical precedent for uh, registering that as the flag of the county of Glamorgan, uh -huh. of, of which Cardiff is a primary part. Mm -hmm. But for somebody from Swansea, mm -hmm. um, it doesn't work for me at all. Gotcha. Um, and I, I very rarely see it around here. Um, and um, But that just goes to show the democracy at work in the Flag Institute. There are people who, who have been given the job uh, of, um, uh, of of accepting requests, mm -hmm. uh, looking into them, deciding the veracity of them and whether or not the design is historically worth uh, registering or whether or not a design competition has to be held. And in this case, there's perfectly valid reasons for it to be the flag of Glamorgan. I just don't personally like them. <laughs> Fair uh, enough. And that, well... and, that ha and that happened whilst I was in charge of the organization. Right, right. Which, like you said, yeah, it goes to show that uh, you weren't, you know, ruling with an iron fist or anything like that. Sadly <laughs> not. Opportunity You'd have had missed. it different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <exactly. laughs> All right. Well, I will, uh, on the video, I'll blur that out for the rest of the... <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you. I'll send you a Swansea City flag, and, uh, and you can just pop the graphic over it. <laughs> hey, I'm not going to argue with uh, getting free flags. <laughs> um. Okay. Okay. I think the last question that I had as far as the flag Institute goes before we move on to Mr. Flag stuff is so you are um, in your correspondences. And when I look you up and things, you are Charles Ashburner FFI. Now, what is the FFI? Because that is a hard thing to Google. Um, I can make an assumption that one of the F's is flag. Uh, maybe the I is Institute, but I don't know. It's a hard thing to Google. So I figured I'd just yeah. ask you. <laughs> I, I'm, it's it it's it's uh fellow of the flag institute fellow okay i didn't know if it was fellow or like former but i was like but he's still in yeah. it you know no, it's, yeah. it's it's fellow it's something it's something that is awarded to people based on contribution and service mm -hmm. um and so although i'm not um in any way in charge of the flag institute now i'm very proud of the fact that i was um appointed as a fellow oh yeah um, and it's probably the best academic qualification that I actually have. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you. I put it after my name too. Yeah. So, uh, so no, I'm, I'm proud of it. I use it. And even though now I am more uh, attuned, if you like, to Welshness and Welsh independence, and that's uh, sure, a, yeah. British, a British organization based in England, mm -hmm. um, I'm still just as proud of it. And very happy to to promote that by putting it after my name because i get asked about it almost every week right okay and it's an excuse to talk about yeah. the flag institute um yeah. and uh it's interesting because you you look at my email signature and you see ffi you don't bother to comment on vexillographer because you know exactly what it is whereas yeah. Yeah. whereas most most people will comment on one or the other uh -huh. um uh, but to you and I, that's an everyday word, yeah. uh, it's, it, which is fascinating. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the thought did not even cross my mind. So Exactly. Yeah. But, and yet, you see, to Joe Public, that's, even, that's more weird than FFI. Mm, yeah, yeah. So, um, so I, I try to encourage the conversation. Yeah, absolutely. Nice mug, by the way. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I know I said that was going to be my last flag and stew question, but you, mm -hmm. you kind of um, brought up another one during the course of that. Uh, you said, so like you said, it is a British institution. So I know here in the U.S. we have smaller, like Portland, uh, Oregon has a vexillological society of its own mm -hmm. that is like in, uh, it's like a sub NAVA kind of thing. They work with NAVA, but they're not NAVA. Um, does the UK have a similar system of like smaller VEX societies like that, or is pretty much everything within the Flag Institute? Pretty much everything's within the Flag Institute. Okay. Um, within England and Wales, um, Scotland, of course, 
has different laws. Yeah. And, and different people in charge of flags. Um, Bill Tibbetts and yeah, the Lord yeah, well, they, Lion of Arms. They, they and... have they have uh, actual laws controlling flags controlled by the the Lord Lion, mm. and we're lucky enough, I suppose, um, at the Flag Institute that the person who became in charge of our regional flags at the Flag Institute when I was CEO. Now, in addition to that, he is also an official herald for the Lord Lion's office in Scotland. So there's very very much a bridge between the two organizations now. Uh, it makes sense that there would be too. You know, if you're interested in one, you probably have at least a passing interest uh, in the other, if not more. Yeah. But okay, yeah, yeah, that would just uh, didn't have that in my notes. But can't believe I I can't believe I didn't ask my Scottish guest this. Well, I guess I kind of asked a form of that. But anyway, <laughs> all right. So we will move on to uh, Mr. Flag. So uh, first and foremost, could you give us a rundown of a little bit of the history of Mr. Flag, how it came to be and how it got to where it is now? Okay, well, uh, my wife and I basically, when we were very young, um, in our early 20s, Mm. um, in order to accommodate my desire to have my own flag business, sold everything we had and set it up. We started a factory. It was basically um sewing flags uh-huh. it was banks of sewing machines nothing was printed um it was all quite skilled work and flags were really pretty expensive especially things like the welsh dragon which takes a bit of sewing um, right yeah and uh, and of course a sewn union flag is 32 separately sized bits of material sewn together by hand yeah um, which is a challenge Oof. um so um we um that's what we started i i decided i was going to call it mr flag back in the days when nobody thought how cool it would be to have such small domain names <laughs> yeah you lucked <laughs> out like yeah so i i chose something like that by accident i mean i i univer- pretty much universally at the time people thought i was an idiot because mr flag sounds very cartoony um and uh, and in fact the the initial logo was uh, a sort of a john bull character with a union jack waistcoat on yeah um, making the whole th- i mean it, very much a bit of a a tongue in cheek thing i think the actually the first logo was a roman centurion called cedric I yeah, can't i've remember. gone through your history section i i vaguely yeah. remember that yeah i can't remember why that was the case but he certainly affair- appeared <laughs> on our very first brochure um, and then we became a bit more generic over the years, and we changed the logo to this little one that you can see at the top above my head. Mm-hmm. Um, and we just focus mainly on the just the word now. Um, we're lucky enough to have at Mr. Flag on every platform, um, which yeah. is great. Um, both that and the hashtag for people with wind are both trademarked. So, uh, however cool um the phrase for people with wind is it's only us that can use it in in flag making nice and um so that that was important to us yeah yeah um and basically it, the late 90s when there was the big financial crash the bottom dropped out of sewn flags mm. for us um 80 of the uh, the business that we had just disappeared pretty much over the period of 18 months Mm, um, and we became specialist flag printers because um, we could react faster. Um, okay. You can't, you can't, you can't sew all of your flags and expect people to have prompt delivery, which they now expect because of Amazon and so forth. Yes. Um, yep. Because they take so long to make, and so you ha- you end up either having people telling people. Well, it's going to be a two to three week wait for your flag, in which case they'll say no, thank you. Yeah. Um, or you have to keep an enormous stock, which is hugely expensive. So we, we took we took a, a risk at the time and we decided to become flag specialist flag printers. And that's really what we do. We can now churn out, um, you know, flags within days. Mm-hmm. Um we can't always finish them within within sort of 
72 hours. I'm sure it depends on the flag and the pattern. It yeah. Depends on the, well, it depends more on the workload. Oh, we can, yeah. we can, because with, with printing, you can print things, you can carry on printing into the night. If yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, but what you can't do is have decent quality sewing machinists ready to finish it, put the grommets in, the rope and toggle, do the hemming, this sort of thing. So there's always a, if we, if things get super busy, like with the, uh, the death of uh, the late queen or the mm -hmm. coronation of the current king. Um, uh, sometimes you can predict these things. Sometimes you can't. And uh, we, we, we just try and be as intuitive as we can. And we pretty much, we do okay. We're, 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 um, we're not a, the biggest flag maker in the world by any means. Um, we are very much a family business. Mm -hmm. Um and uh, my sons, who all have proper jobs now, have all worked in the business and still help, you know, when they're not um, doing their, their real work. Right. Um, so that's, that's us. We're, we're a small specialist, really, really good. Flag, flag I can vouch for that. Yeah, I have <laughs> uh, in Wales. Uh, more than a few of your, your flags. Yeah. Yeah, well, thank you for your business. Oh, thank you for your <laughs> flags. These are, yeah, they're, uh, they're really good uh, quality, like everything. Like, um, that's part of what I was going to talk about. So you said uh, you can print it kind of like whenever. You can even kind of leave that on after dark. Um, but one thing that I had never really thought about until you were mentioning it is, well, obviously, I have thought about putting on grommets because I've started doing that just by hand with a few of my flags that I've done. Yeah. Um, but like the white bit that gets sewn onto the end that either has the grommets or the rope and toggle or whatever, that I assume does have to be done by hand, right? Like, yeah, someone... well, there may well be a machine somewhere in China that sure. does that automatically, but yeah, we do it by hand. So we have, we have sewing machinists who, uh, who put the right amount of, of headband on it. And yeah. They sew, they sew. Headband. Okay. I wouldn't have even. Yeah, we, we call it headband. Um, yeah. I'm sure Makes other sense. terms are available. Right. Um, we, uh, uh, we sew the rope in and attach the toggle. It's a very British way of finishing a flag. Yes. Um, and yes. of course, increasingly now people like to have grommets. We don't call them grommets. We call them eyelets. Yeah. Um, I, I knew there was something different on your site. Cause mm. when I have to like go and look in like the drop down, I'm like, yeah. Oh, I, I'm looking in the G's and I'm like, Oh yeah. Eyelets. Yeah. And we call we, we specify that they are metal eyelets. Because of course, yeah. if you're a skilled seamstress, you can make an eyelet just from stitching. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, but yeah, so we we have to have people who finish the flags, um, and um, we have a we have a love hate relationship between the factory and the office, because the office is where we uh, we have to interface with with customers, and if they they got a problem, it's us that they in the office that they tell. And so yeah. the office is responsible for quality control. Yeah. So a flag, hopefully a flag never gets yeah. sent out just from the factory without having been checked by the people who have to deal with the problem if it becomes one. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ideally. One other thing I was going to ask since uh, it just kind of cropped into my head since we were talking about the, the drop down menu and the metal eyelets and all that. So you have two different fabrics listed. Um, 110 GSM knitted polyester and 130 GSM this is a Welsh word, Rifeller. Yeah. Revelor. Revelor polyester. I was going to ask, warrior. is that a, uh, sorry, what? It means warrior. Warrior. Okay, cool. Yeah, that makes sense. I gather it's the, uh, the tougher of the two. So, uh, is that a proprietary thing? Is that one of your things or is that, uh, um, to my would knowledge, I know about that if I lived over there? Um, in a more broad sense, I'm not aware. I'm not aware of any other flag maker using it. Um, it's not. Um, it's probably only um, unique to us because we don't tell anybody what it's exactly how it's made. But there's no reason why somebody else couldn't come up with the same mix. Mm -hmm. It's it's to do with the the strength of the individual thread that the fabric is woven from. Okay, gotcha. Um, if you have a flag, a standard flag in knitted polyester, which is universal across the UK, yeah, um, it feels a sort of um, slightly silky um, fabric. Um, the properties are quite well known. 
um, mm. better than the stuff you get from China, but it won't last forever. Right, no right. flag ever does, of course. Yeah. Um, but the Ravello uh, fabric that we use, it feels pretty horrible in the hand. Okay. It's, it's, it's kind of harsh and scratchy and because it it's not attempting to be you wouldn't use it of, as a blanket <laughs> no you wouldn't, okay. you wouldn't want you wouldn't want it to take to a football match you probably okay, okay. you probably wouldn't want to put it on your wall is it a little bit heavier as well no it's a little well, it's a little it's about 15 grams per square meter heavier okay yeah. but it lasts a lot longer um, gotcha. you know it's it's pretty much not people's favorite for every use except putting it on a flagpole and leaving it there um, yeah. And if you, if you want to if you want to put a flag up and not worry about it, um, then that's the fabric that we we use for that. Okay, makes sense. There's a price, but there yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'd always uh, I had always wondered because I, I I didn't even know like what GSM meant. I'd... Grams per square meter. Grams per square meter. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. So. Um, one thing that I did have on the list to ask you is walk us through, like, what is a typical day, uh, for you? Like at Mr. Flag, like you get up, you go into, uh, the office on De La Beche street or whatever it was. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, uh, and like, what's, what's like a day like for you? Are you more, do you, well, you tell me. <laughs> okay. Um, the very first, uh, the very first thing that happens in my day and my day starts, I get into the office normally about eight 30 in the morning. Uh huh. Um, very first thing is I, I have a quick look, um, through all the orders that have come in over the internet overnight. And the very first thing that I deal with is coffin drapes because they are universally urgent. Um, <laughs> and so. so, so basically before, before I've even made a cup of coffee, I just make sure that I know what coffin drapes have been ordered that have to be dealt with. Coffins, um, then coffee. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, then then it's i actually leave uh the processing of the other orders to a member of staff mm -hmm. um and only some of those orders will then return back to me during the process but my my day-to-day -day job apart from uh making sure that everybody does their job and making sure that customers are looked after and this sort of thing uh, i'm lucky enough to do my hobby as my job so most of my yeah. day, I draw flags. That's what I choose to do. Uh, I, I don't sit in an office on my own running the company. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, yeah. the company kind of runs itself. Right. I mean, right. obviously, I have to intervene and I have to speak to people and I have to visit places and all of that necessary stuff. But the bulk of my day is spent on Adobe Illustrator. That's drawing, what I was going to ask. Drawing vi vector versions of artwork, and I love it. Yeah, um, it can be it can be weird and it can be fun. You know, there's national flags that have to be adjusted because people want different sizes. There are flags for protests and independence movements, uh -huh. company flags, personal flags. There's a I don't know how much you can see here. But there's it's upside down because it's attached to something. Oh yeah, yeah. So that's Wait. a vector drawing of somebody's face. Uh huh. <laughs> for a flag to go to a festival so that people can know where they are. Oh um, yeah, 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 yeah. Totems. Yeah. So so I sometimes I will I just you know I I might be draw I might be drawing a version of the Kyrgyzstan flag one minute, somebody's face the next minute. <laughs> uh, I could be drawing. Um, sometimes people send us, um, they order a custom flag and they just give us the blazon, which is the heraldic text description of the design. Okay. Interesting. And so, and that's in generally in Norman French. Yeah. So, so I get given a, a set of words to which the regular Joe would mean nothing. Uh -huh. and, and I, and I then have to. Uh, make the flag out of it. Like and I love that. Yeah. This is this is just my dream. So I am basically living the dream. Yeah, I was going to ask your favorite part, but it sounds like it's all kind of your favorite part. Like you, you wouldn't be doing these specific things if they weren't your favorite part. You would just sit up on the office, like you said. But yeah, yeah, no, I'm 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 not a very good 
um, office person in yeah, terms right. of in terms of just directing people and this sort of thing. Uh -huh. I do I do kind of expect people to just once they know their job to get it right. Yeah, um, and they do. Yeah, um, you know we're a small, perfectly formed team, mm -hmm. um, and um, frankly, I must save a fortune by doing the art myself. Um, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm enti en entirely self-taught. I have no qualifications at all. Okay. But I've yeah. been doing this since Illustrator was invented. And uh, I'm ask me to draw anything else, and I'm hopeless. I can't use a pencil <laughs> or a pen or any on paper. I can't draw. But right. give me give me Illustrator, and I can I can create something which scales up perfectly to any size. Yeah. Um, and that's that's my joy. My big joy in the day is drawing stuff. I love I love drawing coffin drapes. People want to have something that represents them, and I'll come up with a either a simple or a weird and wonderful design. Yeah, you know, you know, I, I've had to do psychedelic designs for the Beatles. Sure, uh, not, yeah, not, not for them personally, but right. for people. Who, <laughs> Uh, Maka but, doesn't come down there and say, no, sadly hey, not. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so my, my big joy is drawing flags. Yeah. And um, uh, I get paid for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's incredible. It that's, is. That's the dream. Uh, so many of my listeners dream or, or at least related to it anyway. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've, had, I've had to build an entire company on the oh, back of it just sure. to allow me to have that. <laughs> right it's an earned luxury for sure yeah, yeah yeah um yeah so okay so talking about the drawing process and you were talking about how you get uh submissions whether it's uh an image or sometimes just a description um outside of that and making just the the more run-of-the-mill more standardized ones do you ever just kind of like doodle on your own and just like kind of see what you can come up with like uh, today i want to make a design for maybe this place or or this uh idea i guess i noticed um one of the ones i see on your website and i don't know if this is your creation or not but is the uh welsh republic flag with the words welsh republic on a red background which mm. is an obvious call to the irish republic flag with the green background and that same font i think that says irish republic yeah. i was wondering if this was a charles creation or if this is something that's like I assume not very widely used but like that's uh somewhat known and used or or yeah. yeah. Well, the, the, it's it's a it's a slightly odd one. That actually is a good question because it 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 identifies kind of how I work a lot of the time, which is I might take a telephone call or an email from somebody who says, "Look, I want to have a flag which represents this this idea or yeah this idea." And sometimes, even while I'm on the phone with them, I might have an idea. Mm -hmm. And so, like for example, if we get a, a, a few things people might might send me an email and say, look, I want to have a flag. I can see that you've got the flag for this organization or that protest or I want a flag for this. And so usually I, rather than just write back to them and say, well, we could do this. We, I, I will usually just, if something will pop in my head. Yes. I'll draw it. No. Yes. And I'll just put it straight on the website myself. Uh -huh. um, and then, and then I'll send them a link and say, what do you think? And they just, and then, then they just buy it. Um, because you kind of get a feel for what people want. Um, sure. And, yeah. Um, and there are, there are, I'm just I'm up there. I don't know if I move my, do you see second from the corner on the top? Does that look familiar? Which one? The, oh, the, yes. The one that is not California. But has the Welsh dragon instead <laughs> on the smaller patch of grass like it used to be. It does. Yeah. And, and it has... Um, uh, what do the words say? I can't make those out. Uh, I'm not very good at Welsh. and I haven't got my glasses on. Oh, but <laughs> no worries. It's the, it's the Welsh for the Republic of Wales. Okay, yeah, figured. Um, now, that was, <laughs> that was drawn by... Um, Mabon Finch. I don't know whether you know him. Uh -uh. He's he's Not quite really. he's probably in a lot of the communities that you're in online. I would assume um, I, I will know him, yeah. Yeah, but he, he's a he's a Welshman in okay. America. Um and he, he drew that. So yeah, things just pop out of people's minds 
uh, and sometimes I will draw it. Sometimes they come to me fully formed, um, but it's tremendous fun to do it. There's a lot of historical stuff. Uh huh. Um, we get asked to do a lot of a lot of historical Welsh flags. Um, yeah, yeah, the whole one, category for it. I think we do, but we also have a whole category for um, flags of the the American War of Independence. Yeah, yeah, that. that we, we we send so many of those out to the states. Um, it's and they're great fun to draw because they usually they will usually send me a photograph of the last known version of that flag, and then I right. tend to and I kind of tend to do it a bit during my lunch hours. You know, when I stop drawing flags for money, I tend to sit there with a sandwich <laughs> and do it for fun. fun. <laughs> So it makes me a really entertaining person, as you can imagine. I party. mean, perfect for this show. Perfect for our listeners. Yeah, this. Yeah, that all sounds great. Yeah. So, then, yeah, so, so I, it, a lot of these things just they come right. out of a whole range of different places. So you design them and then like it's a good design. I'm just going to leave it up on the website. Yeah. Maybe a well, second it, person will buy it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I do. And I, um, you know, eventually Google picks up on it. And then the next time somebody is googling what the weird flag is that they particularly want for their situation there's usually one there yeah right on so that's, that's the aim anyway yeah all right so um i i put out a call for questions um although i put it out a little later than i could have on my discord group but um alex tomberlin did want to know and i think this is a really good question what is the most popular flag that you guys sell just straight numbers wise or maybe Union. even top five. Union flag. Union flag. Union is flag. It, is it even close? No. Okay. No, that that's the that's the 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 most the biggest seller. The second seller for us, particularly here, is the Welsh flag. Sure. Uh, third is Ukraine. Okay, right. At that the makes moment. sense. Obviously, two years ago it wouldn't have been. Yeah. Uh, but it is now, uh, and I would say probably if you lump them all together, next comes pride flags of various sorts sure of all um, stripes as of it were all, of all stripes of which the most popular at the moment is intersex progress pride yeah the one that's uh behind your over your it is actually i yeah. guess your left shoulder yeah yeah it is um i don't know how many i've given you but that's those are the ob the obvious ones yeah um for for us yeah, I, I, you know, I, I could kind of guess at a few of the top ones, but I didn't know if the Union flag would be at the top or the Welsh dragon. But I guess since you are, you know, a UK wide yeah. company, there's people that that buy that one from a lot uh, yeah. broader of an area, I guess you could no, say. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're known for being Welsh and proud of being, uh, you know, wanting to have independent Wales yeah. amongst the crowd that shares that view. Yeah. But more broadly, we don't, you know, we don't try and dissuade other people from buying from us. Right. Um, so we, uh, the truth is that the, the flag that we sell most is the flag that I think is the most overrated. Yeah, I was going to say, it's it's a little ironic that <laughs> we're kind yeah. of bookending it like that. Yeah, yeah life's, life's a bitch sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and now I have to mark this one fucking explicit. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, thanks for that. <laughs> it opens the door for me. Um, okay. So let me see. Uh, there was one thing that I did want to mention, or I, I had it in my questions anyway, and you, uh, kind of spoke to it, but you said, so you are not good with a pen and pencil, all that, like on paper. Um, but one of your employees very much is, um, who is it that does your social media? Is that, you said you only have sons. I assumed it was like maybe your daughter, but I guess no, no, just she's, a... she's not related. But okay. she is she is determined to make us succeed on social media, and that's Melisha. Melisha, okay. Melisha, she's she's excellent. She um, is. I wanted to make sure and shout her out because I, I my sub question here was, and can I get them to do my social media? <laughs> because <laughs> well, you'd need to talk to her. She's a, she's a, um, uh, an art. <laughs> An, sort of an arts and social media student at okay. the University of uh, Wales, Trinity St. David, which is directly opposite us on the road here. Okay, um, convenient. And, and that is convenient. And she basically runs the social media. I mean, she, you know, she, she 
passes off difficult questions to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, but probably she in a, in a head on quiz now, she would probably get more national flags right than I would. Right, right. Uh, yeah, no, so yes, yeah, she is excellent. I think we just gone over ten thousand on Insta and twenty five yeah. or something on TikTok, and so yeah, it's she's she's really good at uh, at um, finding out what people like, and when when something starts to blow up, she does more of it. Sure, so. yeah, 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 yeah. Makes absolute sense. Yeah, it's smart on your part too to set up shop right across the street from a place where a lot of art students are <laughs> as a flag. Yeah. Company. Yeah. Um yeah, good call on your part. But um oh shoot, I forgot what I was or something else I was going to ask uh spun off from that, but other than to just say like, oh, yeah, I guess I was just going <laughs> to kind of congratulate you on like the the cohesion of the brand cuz like you said you got Mr. Flag which at the time seemed too short but like ended up being perfect. You've got the hashtag like you have at Mr. Flag on all the platforms. I had to settle for like the digit, like the number four on a few of them. And I should have just done that on all of them. But now people think the show is called Flagged Four Content. So it's like a mm. whole thing. So yeah, you lucked out on the brand cohesion, like that part. Plus you found like the perfect social media manager. Like, yeah, it's all coming up, Mr. Flag over there. So Yeah, no, it's good. It's um uh I'd be lying if I said that we got massive orders from it but it's growing um and uh, i think it, it, there will come a point where we are not only the you know um bigger than other competitors in in our limited field i think we'll be big enough for ordinary people to see it too um and that's that's the key isn't it is to get other people who are not already in the choir to convert them to flags yeah uh, in in one way or another yeah um, and of course being on tiktok and things you do get we do get a small income you know when we've got a, a post that goes past a million or whatever views you know they they pay us for that so see i didn't yeah. even know that because i am yeah. am not in danger of reaching a million views on anything mm-hmm. uh any well, i think soon, we've had but... some that have gone past three or four million and dang and, you know you it, it, it's not enough to Pay sure. bills, but it's not uh, primary income, obviously. But yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a makes the whole thing extra entertaining. Entertaining is the perfect word for it. Yeah, um, you guys are one of the best. Like you guys, flag session. Um, I love FEMO flags of the world. Like people that are doing like different things, moving in the flag space, but in kind of their own unique way. Like yeah. nobody else does. Um, like I, I kind of found my thing with fresh flags. I don't know if you've like seen any of that on, uh, yeah, uh-huh. on Instagram, we're going to start season three here later this month too. But, um, yeah, once you get like a good, like hook, uh, like fresh flags ended up being for me. Yeah. I mean, write it out. You'd be foolish not to. And y'all have Definitely. like three of them, like various different, uh, ways of posting. There's the drawings, there's the you know country that's national day obviously there's flag waving yeah yeah well we, we kind of argue Melissa and i about this sometimes because mm. the doing the doing the celebrating it's the independence day of such and such that's that's me wanting to recognize independence days all uh-huh. around the world um and uh she sometimes says oh that's so boring compared to what i'm doing so <laughs> we, and she's you know largely right but um the combination the sort of the, the it's a good the, mix the, the the visual demonstration of us fighting about what should be on screen yeah it produces the result that you see yeah yeah it's a good mix of, of both yeah. thank you um yeah so i was gonna ask um so there's you Melisha. you said your wife how many people total work there in the store uh well in the in the office itself uh apart from myself and Melisha, just two others Okay, yeah. Um, and then, obviously, we have the factory, and that's currently uh, eight. Okay, right. Yeah, you, when you say factory, I guess, like, in my mind, or maybe maybe my American mind, I think of, like, a sprawling, you know, no, a- it's at just least a, 100 or something. No, no, no. It's just a um, an industrial unit on an industrial estate. Um, and from the outside, you wouldn't know that it was making flags. It's got no signage on it. Um, and we keep it separate because over the years we've had a lot of hate um, mm. 
for being flag makers. Weirdly. For being flag makers? Well, every time we or make a, flag... a particular flag, or no, no, if we if we make a flag of Palestine, we get hate from Israelis. If we make a flag of Israel, we get hate from Palestinians. Sure, there was a time when so just when the political the flag... nature that you can't yeah. that's inextricable from yeah, yeah, yeah. Even when we even when the flag of Devon was being created, we had hate at the time from people from Cornwall <laughs> uh, because the flag had a cross on it. Yeah, um, even though we're not responsible for the design, right. We were we were very publicly making it, and so people vent their frustrations on whoever they can get in touch with. Yeah, and that's why we separate the office and and where they're manufactured because the girls on the sewing machine and they are primarily girls don't need that sort of nonsense. Um, whereas in the office, we're used to ha handling it. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. So yeah, very so just twelve of you overall then. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's kind of the sense that I got. And yet you do a lot with those 12 people, a whole yeah. lot, which I think really is my last question. Other than flags and we've gone over coffin drapes. Um, what else do you guys what else do you guys make there? We try to focus on those two things. OK, but we, we do. We make backdrops, one of which is behind me. Um, right. So for bands or for offices, sometimes for photographers. Okay. Uh, mostly for bands um, and a lot of gigging artists. Oh, that's um, cool. You know, we they can they can take a banner like this, uh, a wall hanging, put it up, and they've got their own little branded place. Um, we do uh, an increasing number of banners for outside use in fabric. We don't make the sort of PVC plastic type banners. At that's all. what I was going to ask. Yeah, is no material -wise. We, it's all fabric. All fabric. Um, and they're better anyway because you you can roll these up and wash them and yeah um, those things get like crinkled weird and like yeah. they get holes in them sometimes from just being exactly tried to... but if you if you have fabric it's a lot more durable um, and just looks like you've made a bigger effort anyway <laughs> yeah so, yeah uh, so really that that's it it's uh, you know we we make <clears throat> we make flags in the two fabrics we discussed earlier printed mm -hmm. flags we do so some flags still coffins mm -hmm. backdrops the occasional tablecloth and apart from that um i mean that really is it actually yeah it's, we're, we're, we're very niche um and it's all about picking the design we do actually also import some flags of the chinese type behind you um because people expect it of us but that's not what we focus on and not what we try and sell right um, those are probably the budget category ones yeah or we, they're the budget ones but um economy yeah the, the the thing for us is is the speed of our reaction so for example when when her majesty died mm -hmm. of course everybody wanted to have a flag straight away and there is a period of a couple of weeks at least where the people who sell flags from china can't get the stock to sell right and that's yeah. a crucial that's always a crucial moment for us because I, I will wake up in the middle of the night, come up with a design, and it could be in, it could be for sale in an hour, and we could be shipping the first ones out in thirty six hours. Um, yeah. So you know, public buildings, governmental buildings, just people, we can get them the flag they need for the, that moment in history. Right. Really, really, really fast. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good end there. Absolutely. All right, cool. Well, um, I think it's about time to wind down as it were um charles where can people find you follow you find mr flag follow mr flag uh i guess you got it right behind you there but if you want to mention it for the uh the listeners <laughs> sure well the the website is mrflag.com uh but you can find us on pretty much any social media cha uh, channel at mr flag m r f l a g and we'd love to hear from people. We like to have new ideas. We like to have suggestions. Just go for it. Throw things at us. Yeah, yeah. Sounds like, uh, yeah, give you something to do over your lunch break or whatever. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> All right, right on. So, uh, listeners, you can find us over at uh, Flagged4 Content on all social media, everywhere with an at sign. Uh, we have a link tree. If you just search link tree dot com slash flagged for content you will find us there and that's got a links links to 
uh, anything you could ever want for the show and probably more. And Charles, thank you so much for coming on. It has been a real pleasure talking with you, getting to pick your brain a little bit, getting the story of Mr. Flag, uh, all of it. Well, it's been a, it's been an absolute treat. I'm really grateful for you uh, having me on, and it's a joy to be able to talk on and on and on about flags without people telling me I'm boring. Yeah, yeah, trust me. I don't check the comment sections um, <laughs> for that exact reason. But um, yeah, I think that's it for us. The only thing left to do is wrap this up. But as it turns out, I don't know where my notes are for that. So Charles, can you help us uh, wrap this thing up? Sure. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have wind, Mr. Flag is the place to come. Simple as that, folks. Uh, this episode and this show have been flagged for content. Thanks for listening, y'all. Flagged for Content is a Flags for Good podcast. Go to flagsforgood.com for more info.